глаза. You gon' feel less thing on here as we keep barking, Chris. And when it comes to things, then we are all in this, yeah. Can eat from Baker, some may say both sauce, not safer. That's how I get a bad rap like Vader. Going deep, taking sauce off like taper. Just bro, freak, get smoked like vapor. To the house, oh, yeah, see you later. We tougher than now, let like gators. We'll beat you right now and later. Woo, woo. Gotta bless them, don't feel cold like juice, but yes, just know you might lose. Be crazy, call them typhoons. Can't block them, oh, yeah, nice moves. Who the stop, don't know, oh, yeah, pick a two. We really all hit the lose on there. They just watch the loose. Winning all day, okay, yeah, that's a new hobby. Got some nice new bodies. Our past records, we know it's shoddy. The city standing strong, we ain't never choppy. Keep it year to year and miles. Should worry about your place of survival. Yeah, we got Odell well. He may be sold out some hotels. You can't be mad, we doing well. You know them jokes that they will tell. Now watch the stories they will tell. Only time will tell. Watch where you throw it. We got water and greedy. For these that we starving, yeah, quite needy. The Cleveland legends, we about to be. There is no stopping me. I mean, we, we. That is how I got to be. Oh, yeah, Bengals, they just kittens. Ravens flew away. They hit it. Oh, those sellers, who they kidding? Play with us. You will get stupid. Okay, yeah, we did. The Big Play Reflog Show is brought to you by ShackNews.com. Shack News is the place to be for all your gaming needs with news, guides, walkthroughs and reviews and they do more than just video games at shack news check out their brand new app shack pets where you can upload and vote for the cutest pets in the world would your pet win download the app today available on the apple store and google play and remember you can join in on that conversation or any other topics and customize your feed using the shack news cortex and shack news reader they've truly got it all over there if you're a gamer Shack News is the site for you. Check them out on Twitter, Facebook, YouTube, and Twitch at the handle at Check News and at Checknews.com. It's time! Streaming live from Cleveland, Ohio! Presenting the undefeated, undisputed heavyweight podcast of the world! The Big Play! The Big Play Reflog Show. What is going on, everybody? Today is Monday, December 6, 2021. I'm your host, Big Play Dave, alongside my favorite guys, Mr. Nick Padone and Chris McNeil. How are you guys? In the Christmas spirit, Dave. Oh, yeah? This past weekend, got everything set. Exterior illumination is complete. We cut down the tree. That's all lit up. I'm looking at it right now. So we are all about the Christmas spirit here in the McNeil household now. I love that. And it's kind of nice not having to break down a Browns loss. Clean Very slate this point. week. Very good point. Or a disappointing Buckeyes loss. So, Oof. Yeah. We need, everyone needed a bye week. Everyone needed a bye week. We did have a disappointing Cavs loss. It was an exciting game yesterday. We did have a loss. They do play tonight. So maybe they can come back and get some uh, get some revenge. That's right, Nick. How's uh how's raising money for the schools going, man? Yeah, man, we're out here we're out here saving public schools. Thinking Save of the Ohio. children. Thank you, the kids. Good work. Good work. Yeah, it's it's been a lot of fun so far. It's literally only been up for a couple hours, and we're a couple hundred dollars in already. So heck yeah. 
do you want to explain to the good people out there exactly what you're doing to save the children? Yeah, definitely. So if you guys go look at my Twitter at Nick Pinello 12, we've teamed up with Cody Doc over at the Big Play Store. We have a pretty simple shirt design out there that says Legalized Sports Betting Ohio. Legalized. Yep, that's all we're trying to do is get sports betting legalized in this state. It's crazy that you know our bordering states, Michigan has it, Pennsylvania has it, a state over, Indiana has it. And here we sit, guys. We talk about sports betting every week, and we can't do anything about it. So I'm going to ha- go ahead and take all the profits and proceeds from this shirt and donate it to Ohio Education and Ohio Public Schools, which is where our money would go anyways once we start – getting sports betting and naturally lose a handful of bets here and there. So I'm going to get Ohio education a jump start since the lawmakers really don't want to and, and give some cash back to start 2022. Right. And, and so how far are we going to take this? Are we taking it all the way down to the high school level? Cause I'm a proponent of going high school level with this. Yeah, I think that's how I'm going to do it. So I found this website. It's kind of like, um, it's kind of like GoFundMe where the teachers themselves kind of post what they need and like their meter of how close they are to getting it. So no, I'm, no, gonna no, go no. I'm not talking about the donations. That's all well and good. <laughs> yeah, no, that's I'm not talking uh... about the betting. <laughs> I'm talking, can we bet high school sports under your hey, program? That's under not, your plan, Nick, are you including high school sports? Because we just wrapped up a fabulous high school football season and a great playoff. Congratulations to all the area teams that won or competed hard. Um, and also congratulations to everybody who made money off of it as I was posting the lines as we went along. Are you going to include that in your plan, Nick? By the way, I, I knew Nick had no idea what you were talking about. He's like, yeah, we're going to let the teachers pick. I like, yes. So. This sounds great. Chris, Every I'll, week we'll bring out a different teacher to pick. Their, I'll say this. Tell us the inside scoop on their, their particular <laughs> students and how good they are. I'll leave you guys with this. If you had St. Edwards as a championship futures bet, you'd probably be pretty happy today. There you go. There it is. There you go. Breaking it all down. <laughs> all right, that's enough high school sports. All right, we, <laughs> we got a pack show, so we're getting right into it. Kicking it off with our Cleveland headlines brought to you by TSE Cleveland. Then we're going to our featured interview with former Browns and Ravens punter Dave Zast. It'll Zasty joining the show. I, we've never had him on. Long over Pride of Bay Village, Pride right? Of Bay Village, yes, absolutely right. Right here in the uh, the big play headquarters. Uh, after that, we're going to get into Browns trivia. Who wants to be a billionaire? Where hopefully we'll give away some Labatt blue lights and a GV art shirt. Ravens theme this week, and then we will break down this week's Browns Ravens part two. Look at some bets presented by my bookie, and last, wrap it up with the best and worst. Tweets of the week. Let's kick it off. Cleveland Headlines. Cleveland Headlines brought to you by our good friends at TSE Cleveland. TSE has helped us give away a ton of signed Cleveland Browns gear this season. Keep an eye for our next giveaway. And remember to subscribe on YouTube. For your chance to win, I have given the reins to our producer, Dollar Dog Nick, who will be doing these from now on because I keep forgetting to do giveaways. So Nick G is on it from here on out. We are good to go. Nice. All right, let's talk. We don't have to talk Browns right away. Let's talk some Cavs. We haven't given the Cavs enough love, I don't think. Um, especially the way that they're playing. This this team is so fun to watch. Nick, you're our resident Cavs expert. What what what's making this team so fun each each and every week? You, you know, even if they don't win the game. Yeah, I think it's two things, right? It's it's the Evan Mobley factor that yeah. we got him back from injury, and you yeah. automatically start winning basketball games again, which is huge. And then the second is just the emergence of Darius Garland. It's been a lot of fun, and it was hyped all off season long. We we heard rumblings that this could be the year that Darius really breaks out, and Steph Curry was hyping him up, which seemed kind of strange. And then, surely enough, I mean, we're watching it unfold right before our very eyes. Garland looks for real. So does Mobley. So does Jared Allen. It was like for such a long time the Cavs didn't have a star, and now they potentially have three of them. The, the improvement of Darius Garland, like year over year, is insane. Yeah. Like people wanted to run that guy out of town. 
And I was like, all right, give give him a little bit of time. I think yeah. he's going to be okay. What's the average? 20 and 7, 20 and 8? It's been nuts, dude. And I think mm-hmm. we wrote him off. So he barely played in college. He played like four college games because he tore his leg against Kent, believe it or not, and ended his Vanderbilt career short. So really his rookie season was like a college year. And then last year, you know, the team just went through all kinds of bumps with not really having an end of his first year due to COVID and the league shutting down. So it's it's just been awesome to see. He's so good. And, and the sky's the limit for him, just like it is with a lot of these other young players too. As long as he gets a little bit better with shot selection at the end of ball games, uh, that's my one pet all peeve right, right now. All right, just Fair saying. Enough. Just saying. I don't know if that's exactly how it was drawn up yesterday, but I doubt it. Yeah, but they have Still been. Fun. I, I hate to fun. hear everybody because it's cliche. It's already cliche to say the Cavs are fun, isn't oh, it? Oh yeah. I mean, it really is. But uh, but they are a fun team to watch, and now comes some expectations starting to creep in. So we'll see how they deal with that now that Mobley's back, and uh, we see this team really starting to to gel. Uh, let's see what they could do. They're playing the Bucks tonight. You know, we've got tough run right now, and. Uh, and see if we can come through that and uh, and have a nice story here because the playoffs are still wide open, obviously in the NBA, and there's a lot of lot of opportunity for us. And I'd love to see a team in there for for the Cleveland Cavaliers. Yeah, speaking of playoffs, the uh, the Browns playoffs wide open, twenty percent, twenty point seven percent wide open, Chris. Yeah. 8.2 percent chance to win the division, according to Jake Trotter. It was a good good bye week for our Cleveland Browns. Getting a little healthy, uh, thanks to the Steelers, weird to say. Uh, Bengals completely blew it. Did this bye week rejuvenate? I didn't spend a whole lot of time on social media this last week on, during the bye week. How, how was Browns Twitter? Did, did they handle it okay? Are we doing all right? Are we still writing poems about the playoffs and how we can do this thing? <laughs> I, I hope we are. I hope we are. That's the positivity that we need in in Cleveland. I I don't know. I I think uh, I think the Civil War still burns. It just burns a little bit less when we have a bye week. So yeah, yeah. we'll see. They come out and lay another egg. It'll be right back on, baby. But if we yeah. win, you know, then it's playoffs. So, it's another week know, of poems. That's exactly right. More poems. <laughs> Heck yeah! Heck yeah! What are you guys feeling for Ravens Part Two? I'm not feeling good. I'm I'm really not feeling good. I I can't. I've been hurt so many times, Dave. Yeah. That I just cannot set myself up for another hurtful Sunday. And uh, now having said that, I'm probably going to pick the Browns to win because I'm an idiot. But, (laughs) uh, (laughs) you know, I'm a fan at the end of the day. Uh, But we got so many things working against us. And even coming off of the buy and, you know, giving Stefanski an extra week, having them right there on film, despite all that, I still just, it, it feels too much like they're kind of going back to the same old Browns this week. I hope I'm wrong, Ugh. by the way, I hope I'm wrong, but I feel like we take another step back. Unfortunately. Oof, that's uh, not- sorry guys. Usually I'm, I'm very positive and I just can't do it. We should have brought Bree back for this, this segment. So she could tell us how we're going to win right. the Super Bowl or something. <laughs> that's right it's like the hawkeye ronin meme chris it's just yes don't, don't give me hope like yeah. we, we are we have played so poorly this year that it doesn't seem like there should be any chance of us being in the playoffs but here we are here we are i will say the chiefs looked so bad early in the year if we could come right. back refreshed two really good running backs we've got the majority of our offensive line out there just go run the ball and see what happens. And, and a week in the NFL changes so much. You know, win this week, all of a sudden we're talking completely differently. Yeah, um, one game out. That's just, the, that's just the way it works. That's just the way it works in the NFL. And if you continue to progress, which this Browns team, you know, has to has to get back kick-started again. But if you do that, uh, then it's a team with momentum. So we'll see. I'm trying to talk myself into this. <laughs> <laughs> Nick, where are, you, where, where are you feeling? I don't know. I'm, I lean to my brain tells me to lean toward Chris, and my heart tells me that it was the bye week. Kevin okay. Stefanski said he's going to try using Chubb and Hunt at the same time. It's crazy that it took an Ivy League degree to figure that out 14 weeks into an NFL season, but here we sit. 
I'm hopeful. I'm hopeful. I hear you, man. I hear you. Let's let's bring on a former Browns player. And Ravens talk. player. He knows both sides. Yeah, all right. Dave. All right. Whatever. Um, it is time for our featured interview of the week. Let's get it going with Mr. Dave Zastadil. On the Labatt Blue Hotline, former Browns and Ravens punter, the pride of Bay Village, go Rockets, and record holder for the longest punt in college at Chris and my safety school OU, Dave (laughs) Zastadel. Welcome to the show, my man. How are you? Good, guys. Hey, thanks for having me on. Yeah, absolutely. It's it's been way too long. We've got Big Play headquarters here in Bay Village. Uh, I was just at my kids' concert at Bay High. Saw you saw your plaque up there. Congrats on the Hall of Fame in Bay Village, man. Hey, thanks. I was at that I was at that Christmas concert night with my daughter too. So uh we must miss just, just missed each other. So hey, notice how uh uh the Browns jersey is in there. The Ravens I, I, I couldn't do anything about, but um you know uh it was a long time ago. So I guess I, I can tell people I played for the old Browns and the new Browns. That's how I look at it. Well, so growing up in in Bay Village, what, like what was what was that like getting drafted by the Ravens? It was it was 02, right? It was. Um, it was so kind of surprising. So yeah, yeah, it was surprising yeah. to be honest with you because you know you go through this draft process, the the combines, and your agents on the phone with you constantly. Um, I really thought I was going to either go to at the time Houston, uh, possibly Minnesota. And when uh, the Ravens called, I was quite surprised. It was kind of neat because it was Ozzie Newsome. And I grew up, you know, a diehard Browns fan my whole life. And, and to hear Ozzie Newsome tell you you're going to get drafted um, with the 112th pick, I, I was, uh, it was, you're just like a little kid again. Um, and, and talking to him. And once I got to Baltimore, it was, it was quite unique because all, all the staff was pretty much still there from the old Browns. Um, Bill Tessendorf, the trainer. Uh, Ed Carroll, the equipment manager, and, and Ernest Biner was our running back. I mean, coach, it, it was just a really cool experience for my first year. That's awesome. What what were some of the kind of the differences between, so you were obviously with the, the Ravens and then over to the Browns, uh, with just kind of with the organizations, what, did you see a drastic difference in your time with the Ravens and then going to the Browns? Yeah, it was, it, it was quite a difference, to be honest with you. Uh, Baltimore was so stable. Uh, with Ozzie Newsom running the organization, you had Brian Billick was coming off a Super Bowl win. Uh, you, you had Eric DaCosta and waiting, and you can tell that a lot of that staff was going to be somewhere, someplace in the future. Everybody was on the same page. Um, they, they were drafting well. Those draft picks were, you know, everything from Jonathan Ogden to you know Ray Lewis to Ed Reed. Um, there just wasn't any drop off in a draft. They were just always drafting good players and they were developing them. So um, it was a really good organization top to bottom. Coming to Cleveland, I was so excited because I I was from Bay Village. Uh, I I dreamed of putting on a Browns uniform. We just had so many inconsistencies and I don't have to go into that because you guys uh, (laughs) well know the history of that. But uh, definitely to answer your question, there was a stark difference between the Ravens organization and the Browns um, from my experiences at the time. Dave, how cool was the shift of a fan base? Because obviously over there in Baltimore, it was a brand new fan base that was kind of getting NFL football for the first time. And then back here in Cleveland, a fan base that, you know, gets their old team back. How how cool was that for you to witness and be a part of kind of both of those things? It, it was awesome. Uh, it, it's interesting when you're in Baltimore, though, you hear different sides of the art model based on being in Baltimore and Cleveland and the history of that. And I don't think we'll ever really know the true story because I think both sides look at it differently, but for him to leave the color, talking like history, a politician, <laughs> right there, talking like a perfect politician. We'll never really know what happened. There's both sides. Yeah. I, I, I have my beliefs deep down inside, but at the end of the day, <laughs> it happened. Uh, we kept the tradition and the history, but, but uh, you know, coming back over here, At the time, I had such a good experience there. And really, I I can't say anything negatively about the organization that gave me my first chance. Um, I developed great relationships. When I came back to Cleveland, though, Phil Savage uh, became the general manager, and Phil was instrumental in me getting drafted there. So 
uh, him and I talked through my agent. We had a mutual agent. And, um, you know, I was so excited to come back here. I really did. I really thought Phil Savage was trying to bring back guys that knew Cleveland and knew the history. Joe Jarevicius, myself, mm -hmm. um, Charles Bentley. And, and I really think, barring some injuries, I think we would have had a really good opportunity to build something. Um, but I could see what he was trying to do. And fortunately, we only had a really one good year in 07. Um, but it was definitely a cool experience. What was that season like in 07? Because obviously we were so close. I think it was 10 wins that year, didn't make the playoffs. Um, what was it like being a part of that team and seeing it progress? It was it was, it was was awesome. Um, you know, Derek Anderson was playing at a high level. Uh, Jamal Lewis, who I played with in Baltimore, uh, was running the ball hard. Uh, we, we had great special teams at the time. And, and so in all three phases, we were playing really complimentary football, which we haven't done here in a long time. Uh, we were known for special teams, unfortunately, because of our record and, and <laughs> how good you know, Phil Dawson was 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 kicking the ball. And um, unfortunately, uh, you know, there was that one year wonder. Uh, I, I thought it was the start of something. Well, I think we all did. And in that last game, I believe we lost to San. We beat San Francisco, and I think was at the time that Indianapolis was resting Peyton Manning. So unfortunately. Yes. Um, you know, that, 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 that's how it shook out. But it was building momentum. We really thought we were going to the offseason, coming back and had a chance to make a big impact in the 2008 season. And unfortunately, it didn't happen. You know, you mentioned Phil Dawson and, you know, and one of those legends in Cleveland now. Uh, what was it like playing with him? And what, what was it that made him special? Do you have any stories that you can attribute to, to Phil Dawson and just kicking at, at that time? Yeah, he, he just was a true professional. Uh, he was a very consistent kicker. Uh, and I don't mean that just by his stats. I mean that his approach to practice, his approach to game day, everything was the same. He was the most cons one of the most consistent guys I ever played with. And I was fortunate to play with a lot of good kickers. I had Matt Stover for my first four years. Yeah. I come here with Phil Dawson. Then I go to Arizona, I had Jay Feely. So I, I was <laughs> surrounded by guys that were true professionals. But Phil really was the epitome of a, of, of a leader. His actions spoke louder than his words. Um, very consistent, great with the fans. Uh, you know, he, he was a, a, just a really good leader in our locker room. And I think what, funny thing about Phil is Phil was so worried about the rain. Uh, you know, everyone thinks of these kickers and you watch this Monday night game, you've seen this 50 mile an hour wins. Phil was more concerned about the rain because of the footing. And so every time I remember playing in Cleveland one day, I can't remember the day. It might have been 06 or 07. We were playing Pittsburgh opening day and that hurricane came through. And Phil Dawson came in and he put headphones on my head and it was a song Hurricane by Bob Dylan. He walked away with a smug on his face. So he was he was so upset about the rain. But I think it drove him to be better because he focused. Um, he really understood how to be a professional and uh, and just, you know, him and I still text to this day. Uh, he, he's just a great guy. That's funny about the rain. You think about snow more in Cleveland. The snow didn't seem to bother him as much as the rain. He just really was worried about the footing. It, it, Phil yeah. was always worried about taking that first step, uh, having a short first step, because if he got long, the second step would be step would be long, and then he starts sliding a little bit over over reaches. So that rain on that field, if it caused it a little slick, he was always worried about that. But he adjusted. He probably brought eight pairs of shoes to a game, and I would look in his locker and I look over and I'd see like eight or nine pairs, and I was like, dude, this is a we have one game here, you know. <laughs> But he, he was he was so focused on getting that good footing. Would you do anything similar to that or, you know, with shoes or any of your equipment for punting uh, that, that would kind of be like like the kicking? No, I just made sure I had a bunch of warm stuff to wear. <laughs> we <can't laughs> sit on that sideline, how cold it got. But I, I had probably maybe three or four pairs of shoes. I wasn't that extreme. But, <laughs> um, you know, when you're a field goal kicker, you got a little bit more of that you know, pressure going down your plant foot. So, um, no, he, he, he was, he was very prepared. Cause being on the Browns in those days, you got a lot of work in a lot of work in, unfortunately. We did. Yeah, we did. Uh, and, and the good thing about it though, is, uh, you know, it, we kind of pushed each other. Uh, we knew that special teams in some of those seasons would have to be very effective uh, to give us a chance to win the game. So we really prided ourselves in, in, in really helping for me, the defense and Prim obviously putting points on the board. So, uh, we, we did not take that lightly. Uh, you, you never do, but I think in those seasons particular, we knew we had to be really good on special teams with Josh Cribbs being a returner the way he did. And yeah. um, especially going out and making plays on kickoffs. We had a really good special teams and we had a really good coach in Jerry Rossburn too. 
a guy we like a lot, friend of the show. He's he's been on, he's been on a lot. We we did a live show with him at Sibling down the street. Uh, Jamie Gillen. He he had a heck of a first year Pro Bowl nominations. He's he's had some struggles, you know this this year. Um, did have you gotten work with him up at at Bay High? I think he mentioned. Yeah, so yeah. I saw I saw him in social media post a, a, a time when he was practicing with a guy named Rex Sunhara, who was another Bay uh, great athlete, and and went to the Miami Dolphins uh, training camp as a long snapper. So Jamie. And him would go to Bay High because it's a turf field, and, and they would practice. So I'm I literally live right by the high school. So I okay. kind of moseyed on over, and I introduced myself to him. And I, you know, I think maybe one or two workouts, I saw him, talked to him. Um, I wouldn't say I really gave him any advice. I just kind of went through different situations and how I handled some things, and, and thought if anything, maybe my experience would help him. Then we went over to Sibling. Uh, I met him for a beer one day, and uh, we caught nice. up again. And uh, you know, I. I I've got to know him a little bit. I text him every once in a while. I think the problem is early in the season, I think that drop that he had, you know, as a punter, when you do that, it definitely affects you a little bit mentally. Um, It's something that you don't really see a lot, but it happens. And it's happened to me in practice, uh, unfortunately not in the game, but I know what that can do to you. So I think after that, you start pressing a little bit. You start trying to do some things and, and you got to get your mental side back. And I think over the last four or five weeks, Jamie's punted the ball extremely well. And I just continue to see improvement from that early mishap. So unfortunately it happened, but he, he's a strong punter. He's short. He's very condensed. So it, it eliminates the opportunity for a block. Uh, I expect him to finish pretty strong here. Heck yeah, that's awesome. Yeah, he's 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 a funny guy, man. He's he's great. <laughs> oh, I mean, I, you see some of the outfits he comes in and, and posts. <laughs> it's like not many guys could get away with that, and uh, you know, with that long hair. I, I wish I had the hair to do that, but I, I don't anymore. Uh, I tell him that all the time. I said, man, don't ever cut that hair. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's great. So AFC North, uh, it's it's been a roller coaster this season. What what are what are your thoughts on the Browns? coming you know into part two with the ravens here uh what, what what do you think about baker what do you think about the kind of the offensive strategy we've, we've got going on this year yeah i, I just think the, the word i would describe is, is of the team so far is just it's just inconsistent uh it, you know, there's just been a lot of you know different scenarios whether it's drop balls you know you know penalties and we see how much the penalties are affecting us you know you go first and 10 you get a hold in your first and 20 or you know your false start your first and 15 and it just kind of kills the momentum. Uh, we, we, we just haven't been consistent. I think even with Baker being hurt, um, there's no question it's affected his game. And that's, a, that's kind of a domino effect. You know, you're going to see a guy that, you know, he's got a bad shoulder, he's got a bum knee. Then Jack Conklin goes out. Stefanski, you can tell, is trying to protect him in some of the play calls. And when teams are stacked in the box like Ravens did in the last game and we can't capitalize on the passing game, it really puts you in a bind. Um, and, and if you saw the game tonight on Monday night, you know, there's no question New England took one pass out of the first 16 plays, but they stuck to that run, even though they're stacking the box and they broke one free. And I think Nick Chubb is easily in a position to do that. So I think they got to get back to what it's making them successful. And that's running the ball. I think it opens up everything, but I just don't want to see the Browns in the second, this kind of after the bye, you know, next, um, you know, five games we got here just hate to see them abandon it early if it's not working yeah no kidding we've we've been saying it (laughs) all year long too it's uh it's been a frustrating season but we got a clean slate you know this the second game with baltimore see how it shakes out what's your what's your prediction for the game and what's your prediction for for the season i think we've got an eight percent chance of winning the division yeah, I think, first of all, to answer your question, I think the game, I, I think we're going to be prepared. Uh, you know, the last game we played was Baltimore, so it's still in our heads. It's not like the Ravens are, you know, we're thinking of the Browns because they, the, they had the Steelers, and we know the kind of rivalry that game has been over the last 10 or 15 years. So I think the Browns will be ready. I think they'll be, they'll be, they'll be healthy. I think they'll be energized. But it comes back to the same old thing I was saying. You have to be consistent for four quarters. You can't beat yourself up. You can't get penalties. You can't drop the ball. The Ravens are, you know, they're going to come off that win. They're not happy. Uh, I just don't see the Ravens right now, um, you know, being the team I think that that they were five, four or five games ago. Uh, now with Marlon Humphrey hurt, uh, the offensive line clearly is getting crushed. I mean, the Steelers had seven sacks. We saw the interceptions we had two weeks ago. 
Um, and it, it, it's it's sad to think that we would won that game. We'd be an AFC. We'd be first place AFC North right now. But uh, I, I just think we got to be consistent in everything we do. and We got to stick to who we are, and that's a running team. So I, I'm pretty confident in the game. Um, but you know, we just got to go out and see uh, see if they eliminate a lot of those mistakes that 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 made them six and six this year. And one more before we let you go. How, how are you liking the uh, the radio gig? We heard you on with, uh, I think, were you on with Ken Carmen recently? And I think you're you're doing quite a few things with them. Yeah, I was. Uh, a couple of years ago, uh, not last year, two years before that, I was doing the pregame show with Ken and Tony Rizzo um, at the stadium. And, and I had a lot of fun. Those guys, those guys are, uh, they, they keep you, uh, you know, going the whole time and keep you laughing. And and it's it's been a good experience. The problem I had is the reason I walked away from it um, was I, I have five kids. And a lot of a lot of the times right now, my daughter's games and, and all their games, my sons are all on Sunday. So I was missing so much time in the fall, uh, you know, and, and my wife looked at me. I think she said, hey, hasn't haven't you given your life to football? Let's just take a break and go to some of these games and, and be with be with my young twins that are almost three. And, and so I kind of took a step back and said, all right, well, if I ever want to get back in radio, uh, it, it, I think there's plenty of time to do it, but I just needed to take a step back and I was missing too, too many kids games. I didn't want to do. So that's, that's a lot of the reason, but I had a great yeah. time doing it. I've Dave's got, has got to go good good dad. Dad. <laughs> that's a good dad right there. That's, that's good to hear. I like that. I like that. Yeah. I'm, no, I'm, I'll, I'm still sure. sneak, I'll still sneak away to a game a couple, you know, a couple <laughs> times a year. I'll do that. Uh, but, uh, majority was, that was the decision guys. I just was missing too that's much stuff at the time. Nice. Well, I'm sure that I will see you on the soccer field or the baseball field or one of the fields with <laughs> my four kids versus your five kids at some point. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, please. If you see me, come up and say hi. I'd love to love to catch up in person. Yeah, sounds good. All right, last one. Favorite menu item at Bay Diner? Oh, wow. Uh, <laughs> I, bet, I bet you've never been asked that before. No, I have not. I have not. Uh, I, I, I'm going to say the pancakes just because anytime I go into a diner, first thing I get is pancakes. And because I never really go and eat breakfast anywhere. Um, but, you know, that, that's that's a good little spot over there. Uh, I'm, I'm over at Mojo's quite a bit getting coffee, too. Oh, yeah, there we go. All right. I'll see you around town. <laughs> All right. Thanks All for having right, me Dave. on, guys. Yeah, absolutely. Thanks, Dave. Thanks, Dave. Thanks, Dave. Uh, go Browns. Yeah, go Browns, guys. Take care. All right, Dave. Zastadil, everybody. Fantastic stuff. He gave me a little bit more confidence, Dave. I'm Run feeling the ball. better. I'm Run feeling the ball. a little better. Here we go. Right. <laughs> All right let's you didn't go. sound too too confident though about the Browns chances I don't think no but very rational and all he talked us through it but certainly didn't really pump the tires too much I think he was very down to earth with his he said assessment. a win this week which was a lot of fun yeah, yeah. yeah. he threw us a bone on that Nick. <laughs> he threw us a bone there that's yes. Dave's asked it he'll be a good guy that's right good dad good yard. dad good guy Dave's asked it'll go go get some coffee with him yeah, <laughs> Mojo's, yeah. At Mojo's, okay. See, you guys are talking all this towny stuff. Yeah, know. all this Bay Village stuff. I'm like, I've been there a couple all times. All this inside uh, <laughs> inside the Beltway stuff. I know. I go there for yeah. the studio and then leave. Yeah, that's true. It all is right, nice keep, over there. It is nice, man. It's a great town. Uh, keep the positivity going. It is time for Who Wants to Be a Beer Unair. Oh, here we go. Bringing in Ryan Brown for his chance to win some beer and a GV art shirt. Let's do it. So dramatic. It's, so it's, dramatic. It's tough to come down off of that <laughs> entrance music. It's the water sip. It's, it's the water, the water sip. sip. <laughs> yes. <laughs> All right, you guys know how it goes. Each week, one contestant gets their chance to answer Brown's trivia questions for a chance to win. Starting off with cash for a little bat six pack, move on to a 12 pack, a case, and one final question for the case of Labatt Blue Light and GV Art Gear. 
This week, we welcome in Ryan at our Breezy 15. <laughs> Ryan, welcome to the show, man. How are you? Good. How are you guys? Thanks for having me. Yeah, absolutely. I, I saw the confidence coming through on Twitter. You are ready <laughs> for this, huh? I think so. Oh, is he, is he talking like junk already? Now. Are you talking <laughs> junk on Twitter? Apparently. <laughs> Fabulous. I Fab- didn't see I didn't see the junk on Twitter because you have me blocked, Ryan. <laughs> <laughs> Do I really? <laughs> yeah. It's an nope. easy block, Ryan. It's an easy block. No clues tonight. No clues. Oh. <laughs> Nick's That's not going to help you out. All right. Are you ready, Ryan? Yes, sir. All right. Let's do it. Question one. Hold on. I need my epic music. All right. Question one for cash for a six pack of Labatt. In 2007, which Brown's kicker made a game tying field goal as time expired, then made another one in overtime to beat the Baltimore Ravens. Uh, Phil Dawson, duh. Easy. Dawson bar. Easy, yes. What a game. That was amazing, wasn't it? Oh my God, it was so good. Do you remember Derek Anderson running out? We're going to overtime, fellas. We're going to overtime. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, the good old days. That's right. 2007. Uh, well done, Ryan. All right, coming in strong. Chris, give him number two. I would assume you want to move on. Yes. All right. Question number two for cash for a 12-pack of Labatt. Which former Pro Bowl Browns QB was drafted by Baltimore in the sixth round of the 2005 draft? Pro Bowl Browns QB. Derek Anderson? Derek Anderson. Yes. Well I didn't done. look ahead. I didn't realize that I was giving away the answer for the very next one. Right there. <laughs> right. Let's just talk about Derek Anderson. Uh, who are we talking about now? Uh, all right, you got a 12-pack, Ryan. Would you like to move on for a case? Yeah, let's go for it. All right, you are cruising through these. Nick, give Ooh, me question number next three. One. All Ooh. right, question number three, and no hints from me. For cash for you a are twi- so mad, Nick. So mad. <laughs> I, I'm not blocked by really anyone. I was floored to see it. I'm for cash for a 24 pack of Labat, who is the last quarterback to start for both the Browns and the Ravens in their career? Ooh. The last quarterback to start for Labatt. both the Browns and Ravens in their career. Like this is a trick. Is, is it Derek Anderson? Is that your final answer? See, now I gotta go through all these Browns quarterbacks. Um, so Browns yeah. and Ravens, yes, in their answer. career. What was that? I'm gonna go final answer there. Ooh, <laughs> not correct. This was a tough one. This was, was tough. Was He's tough. in the booth now, which I didn't realize that he was being primed for TV. I saw him in the booth for, I forget what game it was, but it was kind of wild. I was like, really? That's huh. Ryan, could you get it here? If, if He started five games for the Browns in 2016. He started one game for the Ravens in 2019 and th- 2020. Oh, Robert Griffin the third. Oh, yes! Oh! <laughs> Heartbreaking. That is all right, man. Thanks for playing. Go Browns. How how you see this season shaking out? Um, I want to say we make the playoffs, but I, it still makes me nervous. Yeah. How about this game coming up? I think they'll win at home just because they had the okay. week off. Give um, us a score prediction. Twenty three seventeen Browns. All right, we're going to run it. Awesome. All right, I appreciate it, fellas. Uh, Nick, I'll unblock you. My bad. (laughs) (laughs) Appreciate it, dude. Take care. Thanks. See ya. Yeah, good job. Ah, so close. So So close. close. That was a tough one. That was a tough one. That was tough. That was tough. Crazy that RG3 was, like Chris said, like in the league a year ago and now is already flipped over to the media side. Yeah, he's in the booth. Yeah, you can see him out there. They they knew, you know, that – that's like, you know, Joe Thomas. These networks couldn't wait to post him to do sideline stuff and any kind of media stuff once he was done. Which is surprising. I mean, based upon what Tony Rizzo had said about Joe Thomas. <laughs> yeah, he's a made man, and he's going to have to prove himself in the business. I'm, man, 
he sure did it. He proved it pretty quick. Damn quick, yeah. Uh, I would say so. Hey, maybe Joe Thomas could take over for Bruce Drennan. There That'd be know. fun. I like that. I like yeah, that. Yeah, very interesting. Right, Thomas Live. Thomas Live. <laughs> First offensive lineman in NFL history live. <laughs> That's a little bit too long for a Yeah, title. imagine that on like a TV guide. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We'll just put our show on Bally's. Let's yes, do it. Bally's, call Let's us. That. Have your people call our people. There we go. Big there play reflog X Bally Sports. No, all bets are off. We'll just keep the name. I want to keep all bets are off. We're going to steal that. All bets are off with Big Play Reflog. <laughs> and, and we're and we're going to devote most of the show to high school football. <laughs> oh no! Uh, Trust me, it'll be the biggest overnight today. sensation in Cleveland. These people will go nuts for it. You should have seen my DMs every time I posted those lines. Man, they're like, "Where can I go to bet this? Where can I go to bet this? I know you can bet it here." Like, no, no, no. I'm not taking your cash. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's look at some let's look at some actual bets. All right, it is time for some betting action. With my bookie, we had a pretty rough week with the last Browns game and the Buckeyes, Ohio sports in general, just not a great thing to bet on over the last couple of weeks here. Uh, But we are back and we are due to beat the Baltimore Ravens. Get the bets in. Stay tuned for the weather before putting that bet in, by the way, because you look at Monday Night Football you want to make sure nothing like that is coming through. Nick, how is that looking, by the way? It's Let's looking all right, Dave. Your head's under. above water. Your head's okay. above water. I I believe it was 11 to 7 when it went to commercial, but I haven't. I'm engaged in the show, Dave. I'm doing a good job. Here. I hear you. I hear you. All right. Yeah. So I think I did 46 and a half was the under. You're alive. You're alive. I'm alive. I'm alive. Okay. Okay. Go throw some money down on my bookie. Use promo code big play uh, to match your deposit. Extra money credited to your account instantly. Promo code big play and get in on the Browns player stat parlay bets. Those are super fun. $5. You can win like $3,000. One day it's going to happen. We just have to get a better offense. One, one Nick, one week. We just need the offense to click on all cylinders. Could it be this week? You don't know Could unless you toss five in. <laughs> That's right. Every week, put five bucks in. We're going to win. We're going to win at one time. Um, all right, let's, let's look at some potential bets here. Uh, Browns, Nick, have you seen the line yet? Yeah, it's been all over the place, so it depends where you look. But it it seems like it's literally a pick You know, I've seen a half a point. I've seen one and a half. I've seen two is about the most you'll see it. So it is virtually a pick They have no idea how this game is going to go. That's probably because the Ravens are banged up, and we haven't played in in a handful of days here. Well, I mean, God, look look at the Ravens versus Pittsburgh. Yeah, and we're coming off a bye. We just played them. Chris, are, would you take this in a pick'em game? Well, you got to look at the facts here. The facts are Ooh. we got a head coach in Stefanski. He is yeah. undefeated off of a bye. Undefeated. <laughs> Never lost. Never lost. Wow. So take it to the bank, Dave. There's there's that optimism I was looking for. There was that stat. That I needed to for me to confidently waltz in here and pick the Browns to win this weekend. I will one up you there, Chris. The Browns, in addition to Stefanski being undefeated off the bye, undefeated, Dave, undefeated. Last season, Browns took four in a row, four straight following the bye last year. That's a sign of a good coach. That's what they always say. If they it was also an bye, easy schedule. Shut up, Nick. <laughs> no, Nick, no. And the Ravens lost Marlon Humphrey for the season. He will not that be in this helps. game. That also helps. Over under 42 and a half. That seems very that seems low. Oh, no, that, that seems, seems high to me. I was going to really? say that seems high. 
I, I can like see this being a low scoring, just drag them, just yeah, one of those street fights. What was I the score? Seven. What was the score when we played them? I don't even. I blacked out. I don't remember. I don't know. We not enough for us. More for yeah. them. Yeah. yeah, that's basically huh. how it turned out. Huh. <laughs> we didn't have seventeen. Browns haven't scored seventeen since October tenth, October third. It's been a while. October 3rd, two months ago. Holy yeah, they did crap. it once. They did it in the Cincinnati Bengals game. After that, it's been a lot of uh, under 17. That Bengals game was magical. It I, was. Yeah. Why can't we just play the Bengals every week? Yeah, well. That would be nice. That would be nice, Nick. That's what the Chargers oh. are saying, too. Right. Over, under, Baker touchdowns. One. One. A one? one? He's going to throw one. Nijoku. one? Well, yeah, but then that's a push. Don't you need two for that to cash? Ah, uh, that's true. All right, one and a half. Is Peoples Jones back? Yeah, he should be. He should be right. He played last yeah. week. He, oh, he dropped course. that pass. I, I forget. <laughs> you get into buy. I forget who we got. Yeah, who's, who's on our team again. Schwartz. <laughs> what a what a disappointing rookie year. Yeah, I take yeah, the over thanks. on one and a half. I I think he can Would throw you? two. Uh, yeah, I I mean we've seen him do it before where. Literally, they get to the goal line and design, you know, the the chub yeah. rollout play. And we haven't even seen in, it a lot, Nick. He has eleven touchdowns. Yeah, it's it's bewildering, isn't it? But bewildering. Yeah. They need to turn them loose a little bit before they get down there. It's like you can't let them just throw tight end screens and then get to the goal line, and that's all he's thrown the entire drive is tight end screens. And it's like, well, shoot, what do I do now? It's like let them rip it a couple times downfield. I know, Dave, you are saying that. With all the Odell drama, run Chubb, run Hunt. It seems so simple. And then just, I don't know, at this point, are we even asking to take the top off? How about just a nice 10, 15 yard completion downfield? Yeah. Move the sticks. Just get him out just... of the pocket. Get him out of the pocket where he can throw on the run on play action. I don't want any happy feet. I think he's top five in time it takes to get rid of the ball in the pocket top five not being a good thing i think it's like 2.4 2.5 seconds all the the good quarterbacks are like 2.2 and blake hans is back to a guy named blake by the way guy, huh? named, blake. guy yes. named blake he hasn't earned the full name yet back to a guy named blake he's been so bad yeah I'm, this is sad we're averaging 21 points a game that's yep. not really that's not very good he's also back to one of the most sacked quarterbacks for you know, people were giving Bill I Callahan his flowers. Nick. Yeah. We're also the most penalized team in the league, which is fun. <laughs> he's been a lot sad. about coaching, too. That says yeah. a lot about coaching, too. He has been sacked 29 times this year into the bye. Last year, 26 times. Rookie year, 25 times. 2019, when he had a horrible season, he was sacked 40 times. He's yeah. on pace to get there. We're back. The, I mean, the turnstile is back. You know, Jed was hurt at the beginning of the year. Like, let's if we're going to make excuse for Baker being hurt, let's make excuses for everybody. Jed rolled his ankle like one of the first plays of the season. And so played he, through it. And played yeah. through it. So he was awful at the beginning of the year, and Baker was getting sacked from that side. And then Jack Conklin got steamrolled, you know, against the Ravens and couldn't even walk off the field. So now that right side is a turnstile. Literally the three in the middle have been the only highlight of that offensive line. It, it's been a mess for him again. Maybe we should just stop playing players when they're hurt. Hmm. That goes again. That goes, that goes against again. everything the NFL stands for, despite what they say. Come on. What's now. the anal what do the analytics say on that? I wonder. Play hmm. them hurt. Play them yep. hurt. I would assume so. And be efficient. No long throws. We need efficiency. We need math. Yep. You've Let's already paid disrupt. for them, so you got to get as many reps as you can. So the payment per rep is the lowest possible. I yep. think we're going run heavy in this. I do, uh, Chris. Stat line wise, what do you what do you see from Chubb and Hunt in this game? Uh, what is the over under on that? So I gotta say, I I, I think we're gonna go heavy with both those guys. Yeah, I, I'm thinking 150, 170, 175, Total. 180. Yeah. 
Yeah. So last Porky. year to put it in or not last... purr, not purr. Although I would really like it if it was purr. <laughs> yeah, that's poem worthy. Uh, last week, Chubb and Hunt, fifteen carries, thirty-six yards. That's an outlier. That's that's not good. That's no, bad. no. Baltimore's tough to run on. Obviously, last time we played them, they knew what we were doing. They stacked the box. We gave up the run. But uh, this time, it's going to be totally different. It should be. <laughs> uh huh. This time they're going to play them together, Chris. So now you see Chubb and Hunt at the same time, and then you get Baker throwing a four-yard completion to Austin Hooper on third and seven. Oh, he dropped it. (laughs) Oh, yeah, he dropped it and fell down. You guys ever notice Austin? What what do you guys want to see out of this game? Always falls down. A win? Yes, a win. Just win, baby. Just win. You know it's going to be ugly. (sighs) It seems like that's the way we're going to have to win now. You're not going to improve, baby. These pretty smooth games where you see Jarvis Landry, you know, with gadget plays and everybody's all jacked up. And you're not going to see it. You're going to see us just three yards in a cloud of dust. Hopefully we get some turnovers and we can turn those into points. We're going to need that kind of thing because I just don't see this team right now with Baker the way he is, with our offensive line the way they are. I, and just, you know, the overall flow. It's just been so clunky that I think that's that's the way we're going to have to win ball games is win ball games ugly. Yeah, I mean, which the by the way is okay with me as long yeah, as it comes out of W. I don't care. Right. I, it's you know, it, it's not a beauty contest in the NFL. Win games yeah. and then advance. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you look at our defense. I don't see us getting four picks again. The offense has to do something this game. They have to. Pound it with Chubb, pound it with Kareem, and yeah. do the play action and get something going because the defense had one of the greatest games of all time for Browns defenses yep. against the Ravens, and we lost. So it's 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 got to be the, the offensive turn. Hey, how about how about let's team. not have Higgins and Janovich be a healthy scratch, huh? Let's start there. Let's What's start an hour. Let's start What's an hour there, before Nick? the game. It's called your What's coach. What's going on with Higgins? Your That's coach won coach of the year, and then he like, got cocky, and now he's got cotton webs in his brain. Is that what it is? Do you think they're just they're just pissy, or do you think he's he's scratching them, or what's going on there? I mean, I don't know. I'm mean, it's it's something new with Higgins literally every single year. So, and we'll, yeah. I I think that's just one of those things we'll never know the answer to. But to go. You know, say what you want about Bill Belichick and he makes statements and that's his thing. You don't go into a must win game against a divisional opponent without your second best wide receiver and your fullback in a game that Kevin Stefanski literally said he knew it was going to be tough to run the ball. So you go in with three healthy receivers and no fullback. That seems to me like you have some sort of brain fog up there. (laughs) Brain fog. (laughs) You're accusing our head coach of having brain fog? I mean, I wouldn't have written those two names down on the inactive sheet. That's a bold accusation right there. My <laughs> that is. That is. What are your predictions for the game? I'll get through it. Get oh. through it? Come on. <laughs> We're off the bye week. We're a little bit healthier, Nick. Show some optimism. Browns 21, Ravens 13. You got them breaking 17. Yeah. Be better. Yeah. How about Maybe. that? Offensive explosion for the Browns on this one. We're going to see it. We're going to be lighting up that scoreboard for 21 points. Yeah. Speaking yeah. of lighting up, how about Kevin Love? <laughs> how about Josh Gordon? <laughs> Kevin Love, once again, man. I know. I, I wrote him off for dead, and so did everyone he is else. A oh, yeah. Great bench player. He is. He is. He's like our energy guy off the bench between him and Ricky Rubio. It's pretty wild. He's bald. I mean, he's a very expensive role player. (laughs) Don't get me wrong, but he's he's knocking down threes. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Very expensive. We don't play case. Case We can't can't take him out of his case. You know, whereas (laughs) Kevin Love, he's coming off the bench, baby. If you had to place a bet today, on the Cavs making the playoffs, yes or no? What do you, what, Nick? Yeah, yeah. Does play, especially if playing stuff counts? Yeah, that counts. That counts. 
I'm I'm making it either way, whether it counts or whether it doesn't count. I'm having so much. I'm fanning fearlessly. With stop this saying you're having fun with this team. We're going to put a moratorium on that. You can't <laughs> yeah, say it's, it's no fun. longer I'm fun. I'm sick of hearing it. It's fun. Ooh. Now it's expectations. Now you know, it's all like, business. Even like no one in Cleveland will care. I feel like if they make it to the first round and get swept. I don't well, think it'll happen. Especially if they can't watch the games on TV. <laughs> well, those are national. Those are different. But yeah. it's That's just like... True. That's true. Up until just, that point. They're finally getting like the experience. And I don't think the team cares. Like I really don't think they care who they play on a nightly basis. So getting to the no. playoffs probably just doesn't matter to this team because they're just having fun and winning. That, what are they doing? <sighs> the dollar in the jar. Damn it! They're having fun. I'm, Nick, I'm gonna, we're gonna we're gonna raise shirts. dollars by saying they're having fun for I know local schools, local, local schools, school. and then geez, what makes more money, my shirt or the Cavs are fun fund? Oh, there's there two. Oh, there's two. God, best worst tweets. Let's go. <laughs> Is that new music? I, you know what? I don't know where it came from. I, I like remember it. I played it last week, and I was like, huh, I don't remember doing that at all. But Keep yeah. It. I like it. It's kind of upbeat. Right. Kind of end of the show, upbeat. I like it. Bring us into tweets. Let's go. Nick, I'm going to give you the best tweet. All right. Not right. you personally. I'm going to block you on Twitter, but uh, you can you can announce the best tweet here because Perfect. I still don't really understand what's going on. Oh, man, Nick put this one in there. Okay, so best tweet of the week is from Mike McCoy on Twitter, and he explains that Brown's whiteout Jarvis Landry is the first NFL player to launch his own cryptocurrency, which is Juice Coin, dollar sign, capital Juice, and an NFT fan club, Club 80, on Ethereum Rally Network. This is an interesting move for a couple of reasons. And then put a link down there. In the article, it says you can use Juice to purchase experiences like playing video games with Jarvis Landry, getting exclusive merch, et cetera, et cetera. How about having Jarvis Landry score a touchdown? (laughs) That would be fun. (laughs) Yeah. How much do I have to invest in Juice (laughs) to uh, have Baker throw it to you in the red zone? (laughs) Oh, man. (laughs) What do you think about that, though? I mean, it's unique. I like that these guys are, are kind of getting into it. I'm curious to see what happens to the juice currency, especially because, like, I know we talked a lot of Top Shot, and I, and I definitely did once the NBA was in that craze. But the NFL has a handshake deal with that same company. It's called Dapper Lab. So there's going to be, like, NFL moments the same way there was NBA. So I wonder what happens with that. I, I wonder if anybody is really buying juice coin to begin with. Or, but, do, you guys, um, I, do you guys remember? When EJ Manuel became like a a stock, they they yes. tried to do this. Wow! Like, like ten years ago, they tried doing this. Yeah, and no one really understood it, and they're like, "You could buy stock in EJ Manuel, and it'll go up and down, and you can sell when you want and buy more EJ Manuel." <laughs> That's what that was. Yeah, he was but, EJ Manuel was an NFT before NFTs. Yeah. Interesting. Interesting for sure. I like and still, I think still get it. I think it'll help people understand it, Jarvis's will a little bit more because there's something tangible, right? Like you invest X amount of dollars if this is how it works, and you get to play Madden with Jarvis. You know, that helps just people understand it because there's something yeah. tangible. That's what my buddy Sheldrick Redwine did with his as well. Like the whoever bought the NFT, you not only get the NFT, which you could do whatever, keep it, you know, sell it, but you also got to go to a game with them so that's kind of cool i don't know if you're investing your money though i'm i'm more carl nassib on this you know yeah. compound I mean, interest that's probably I think that's a way. smarter way to do it i learned this on hard knocks do you guys know about compound interest are you are you aware of compound interest? i learned on hbo <laughs> thanks to carl nassib loved carl yeah. Yeah. there's another good tweet here chris what about that one by kenny lofton in the hall of fame that's a good one ken carmen i agree with that he has given us so many moments. I mean, my God, those 90s teams, it just it feels good to even think about those teams and just how good they were and just all the energy it brought. You know, with the Browns gone, having the Indians that summer, the summer 95. Oh, man, that was fantastic. But put Kenny Take in. Me back. Okay. Yeah. I, I've, I've kind of backed off the put Omar Vizquel in. 
That's fair. Home. That's fair. Uh, he's, he's had some off the field issues that I'm not as comfortable with. So although I think Omar was just a fantastic and just a transcendent player at shortstop, I think there's a, some unresolved things off the field that make me a little more uncomfortable about getting behind that uh, that campaign in a big, big way. Timing's probably not right on that one, Chris. No, probably not. So let's go with Kenny Lofton. I, that's a good one. There we go. Worst tweet comes from an account. Uh, I love the Pittsburgh Steelers. <laughs> I've never heard of this account before. That's I love the Pittsburgh Steelers. That, what a dumb account. Who in Ouch. Cleveland would ever name their account that? Uh, the week's almost over, Sir Yacht. <laughs> oh, poor Yacht. Why does he do these things? Why? Do you guys ever watch Family Guy? There's there's this one Family I Guy used where, to. where Peter Griffin, like, he keeps getting, like, helicopters and, like, dirigibles and things and and quagmire is like who gives these to you where do you keep getting these things so it's, it's kind of the same thing why do you keep doing this to yourself like why these are unforced errors like what is going on here i mean i understand you're chasing clout and and you're very upfront about that in fact you're you're in everybody's face that you're upfront about that and that's fine but my god man like we're far enough into the season, we get it. Maybe take a few weeks off. I don't know, but <laughs> it was a bye week, Chris. He had to do something. That's right. You can't stuff. just not make content for a whole week. Yeah, that's well, true. That's he true. gets best best worst tweet. Well done, sir. God, well done. Don't you mean I love Pittsburgh Steelers? Well done. That's yes, right. Pittsburgh Steelers. Well done. Yes. Well by done. the way, while we're, while we're chatting it up, the Cavs have come back and they're only down by three right now. There uh, they're you know a why? Why? team to watch. <laughs> <laughs> I was just baiting Nick. I was just baiting him. Uh-oh. Oh, dunk by Jared Allen. By the way, he is another oh. player who is fan-freaking-tastic. Rebound My machine. God, He's when we very got him, enjoyable to watch, Chris. That's right. right. When we, yeah, when we sure. shot him, we showed up in like a ski mask with a gun to get him. But, man, he's just been fantastic. I mean, that was just a straight steal. He people is, were, yeah, and people yeah. were knocking that contract. I think that's looking pretty good. That's looking oh, yeah. pretty, pretty, pretty good. Chris. Pretty good. I'm yep. starting the Jared Allen chant at the NBA All Star game in February. I right after the National we're All Star. I wonder how many people realize we're getting the All Star game. <laughs> there hasn't been long. much there about much it. Marketing. Yeah, zero buzz, zero buzz. They're going to ask us to start promoting it on our show. That'll be like their big push. We're going to be voting on the dunk contest. Yeah, Yeah. (laughs) that's right. We got to get into it. You guys got to talk to your contacts. We got to get into that game. Yeah. Oh, I I was chatting with Labatt this week, and they would like to do a Monsters game where we all go to the Monsters game. I love the Monsters. And we we could pick what we want to do. We could put Nick out on the ice and put him in the human slingshot. Sounds good. What? <laughs> or we can have a fan win that and go to the game and do the human slingshot, take their family or whatever, uh, as a giveaway. What do you guys want to do? Give it away. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Oh, that's a tough Nick's one. Getting <laughs> fuzzier and fuzzier. He's trying to pixelate himself out of this conversation. <laughs> He's censoring himself. Like, is he getting nude there? Is that what's going on? <laughs> My camera's oh, like, no. yeah. wouldn't that be fun? Yeah, yeah. Let's sling Nick, sling Nick Knight. I'm right, down we'll, for we'll, it. If, we'll, we'll let the fans vote. We'll if put a bat wants to do it, I'll do it. There sling we Nick. That's we right. have to give away some of these mugs. Sling Nick for the kids. Look at that thing, Chris. I was showing you this. You're yes. our hockey aficionado. Labat blue Go mug projects. with a hockey puck as the the bottom of it. Pretty cool. That is fantastic. That's fantastic. We'll give some of those away. And I think we're going to do some giveaways around the holiday season for Christmas. So stay tuned. That's enough show. What do you say? I think so, Dave. I think go so. Browns. Go Browns. Go Cavs. Go Browns. Buckeyes. Go we didn't talk about the Buckeyes. How about that upset of Duke? Oh, the basketball. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Oh, I'm not talking football. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I'm talking about upsetting the Dukies here in the shot. That was Coach K's final time here in Columbus. Wow. And we send him off with an L. I just love that. That's fantastic. Way to go, basketball bug guys. Very underrated watch right there. That's right. All right, huge shout-out to Shaq News. Go download that new app, Shaq Pets. There's thousands of 
pets. You can upload your own pet on there. Go vote. Super cool concept. Go to Twitch. Check out their live video streams. Uh, and I think they just released something about they're doing a Hall of Fame for gamers, different games. Check that out. It's at checknews.com right now. Um, go play some bets with my bookie. Get in in that Browns parlay. Probably take some unders with the overs this week. Sorry, high school football's over. They're going to be off the yeah, board. They, they have an update. They're coming back strong offense. next year, though. We'll, we'll look at All the future. bets are off the big play reflog. High school. <laughs> oh, that's right. Go get some TSE gear. We're going to start those giveaways back up this week. Thanks to Dollar Dog Nick. Because um, I am just not doing my job. And shout out to GV Art. Go pick up some shirts, some yeah. hoodies. Guardians look gear. Look at this. Guardians gear. That's right. Way Cleveland better than baseball the team art is. that's available downtown. It is. <laughs> we'll see you next week, Monday night, 9 p.m. Go Browns, go Cavs, go Guardians. Go Bucks. Goodbye. It's time. Streaming live from Cleveland, Ohio. Presenting the undefeated, undisputed heavyweight podcast of the world. The Big Play. We Show.